Hello viewers, welcome to MOOC's online course on visual perception and art, a survey across the cultures. Today we have the lecture number 6 and this lecture is precisely on child art. Now as the term child art itself suggests, we are going to look at the art made by children created by children as not only examples of a very fascinating subject and because of their creativity and imagination and technical freedom exercised in their art, but our interest as far as this particular course is concerned is to look at child art from the point of visual perception. What kind of visual perceptions or what uh, is the role of visual, visual perception in the making of child art. Now the two key terms used very frequently in the context of child art are one imagination and two creativity. However, both these aspects are integral to the process, the technical process, the very physical process of making a painting the thought process, the mental process, the perceptual process through which a child reconstructs the visual world, through which a child reimagines the visual world, through which a child creates an entirely new visual world for their own sake. So it is the process that uh, plays a key role in uh, creating or uh, driving what we call imagination or what we call creativity. So thought process and making process, both these processes are very important to understand child art vis-a-vis -vis visual perception. Neither creativity nor imagination is predetermined or preset. No matter how talented a child is, both creativity and imagination are gifts of the process itself. Children's creative thought is bolstered by the fact that the young child is not bothered by inconsistencies, departures from convention or non-literalness which often results in unusual and appealing juxtapositions and associations. In other words, unless and until a child gets completely tutored or trained in a particular method of making art, we find her or him in a state of endless freedom where the child does not feel any hesitation to make any kind of juxtaposition either of forms or of colors, to make any kind of exaggerations of forms or colors, to create most unusual visual constructs which nobody has ever seen before. Now all these things happen because at the foundation a child is actually free in terms of exercising certain freedom, in terms of exercising certain liberty of making art. And that is exactly why I was referring to this fact that we will not be able to understand the visual perception a child gets involved in while making art unless we take it into account that the mechanical process and the mental process, both these processes are very important for the child to allow their freedom and creativity to grow. Now look at this painting by a child and this painting has full of faces of various kinds. 
looking at these faces from a very conventional point of view, these faces may look very ugly. But for a child, these faces are not ugly. They are extremely colourful expressions. Now, this is where the visual perception gets connected to the emotional expression in a child art. We shall see more of it later. Now, for children, visual perception is not normative, that you have a set of rules or prescriptions and you follow those rules. Uh, this is not what a child usually would do. It is not a matter of allegiance to a certain expectations either, but rather a matter of adventure and discovery. So, when you study visual perception in child art, what you notice almost at the outset is not only an immense amount of freedom and liberty that children exercise in their art, but also a spirit of adventure and spirit of discovery. And this is exactly where a child does not really need to follow any preset principles of visual perception. They can create their own visual perception. They can create their own visual logic. They can create their own visual world. And this creation is important because it also allows us to have a glimpse, to have a kind of knowledge about how the visual perception works in their mind, in their eyes, in their imagination. So, when you look at a painting like this, it is basically the juxtaposition of very strong colours. It is basically an unusual juxtaposition of space or construction of space that these elements make these paintings very, very powerful and visually very appealing. And it is something that as grown-ups, uh, we as artists would not even dare to do. And even if we do, we first need to unlearn what we have learned in our art colleges and art institutions and then get back to the freedom that a child exercises in his or her art. Now, when you look at a particular drawing like this, a drawing by as the drawing itself is pretty evident that uh, it is uh, done by a very small child. But as grown-ups, we may have problem to identify this form as an image of a walking man. But when this particular child was asked what uh, did he do in this drawing, what did he actually draw, at once he replied that it was a walking man. So, we have to, we have to follow him we have to pay attention to him and accept that yes, it is an image of a walking man, but it is not really very easy for us to identify this image as a figure of a walking man. But the child on the other hand seems to be completely satisfied with its representational criteria. And this is where visual perception or certain aspects of visual perception in child art get connected to representational criteria or representational norm in child art. Because what is expected as the accurate, correct or proper representational norms in order to make the representation of a certain object or figure uh, convincing, acceptable is not something that a child follows. A child usually evolves, discovers its own representational norms. You may say that it happens because the child is yet to learn certain matured tricks or techniques of visual representation. Yes, you are too, to some extent, but there is also a stage let us say till the age of 5 or 6, when a child actually, it is not that he or she would not be able to pick up these techniques, but they refuse to pick up those techniques, because they are already 
living in a world of a visual perception where these quote unquote accurate representational techniques are not required yet. So, unknowingly these children follow a different set of visual perception and they follow it in a very convincing manner. Now, look at this, it is still identifiable for us that these five figures are five representations of five persons, probably a family, but then we find that the, uh, apart from the head, the rest of the body is so, so, so synoptic, so minimum, uh, it is so suggestive that the child does not bother to make the legs and the arms and the body look three dimensional or having volumes. He or she simply lives at the stage of what we call a certain kind of symbolism. So, this is interesting that as far as visual perception is concerned in child art at a very early stage, we notice the birth of symbolism, something similar to what we notice also in the history of art. However, a thorough study of the way a child evolves in her or his art practice reveals a few exciting aspects of visual perception. As a result of the child study movement in the early 1900s, it is generally recognized that children progress through certain stages of development in their art making. In other words, the evolution or development of child art is not arbitrary or random. Though when you look at individual works of child art, they might look arbitrary or random, but when you look at the whole history or evolution of child art, it is not arbitrary or random. One notices certain stages of development. Each stage may be identified by certain characteristics that show up repeatedly in their artwork. So, there is a pattern that one discovers particularly art uh, historians and uh, child psychologists, they have certainly observed certain patterns and that is why they are able to come up with this uh, certain theories of development of child art. Now, these stages have been linked to the chronological age particularly from 18 months when a child is a toddler to 6 years. However, a number of factors both internal and external affect a child's artistic development. For example, social factor, family factor, cultural factor, environmental factor and also the historical or political environment may play a crucial role in altering this history of evolution of child art in certain cases. Hence, their visual perception is anything but constant and that is exactly the reason why we say that in child art, in spite of very thorough study of the development of child art, we can never say that the visual perception is a constant factor. It is highly variable unpredictable and full of surprises. So, most of the theories on child art propose a similar pattern of development that is one of progressing from scribbling to more or less convincing representations. Other generalizations that may be made include one socio-economic factors seem to have little influence on the earliest stages, for example, all children begin drawing by scribbling, no matter uh, the social background they come from, irrespective of their geographical, cultural backgrounds. Moreover, girls and boys tend to draw alike at the early ages, whereas that might change and we might notice a gendered kind of uh, division or distinction when the girls and boys grow up. Children's drawings typically show greater development than paintings because crayons, 
markers, pencils are easier to control than paint and brush. Now, this idea can be contested because we have observed in many cases that children they are equally adventurous with paint and brush as much as they are with crayon or pencil or markers or pastels. So, I mean these are not extremely watertight kind of theories, but certain observations and based on those observations psychologists have come up with uh, certain theories, but then we can always uh, modify these theories based on our own observations. Now, it is also said that considerable overlap exists between the stages. Two stages may be represented in one work and a child may regress to a previous stage before advancing to the next stage. So, it may not always be in a linear pattern. There can be some kind of uh, up and down or to and fro between the various stages depending on the mentality or tendency of a particular child. It is unlikely that a child will reach the later stages without adult support or instruction. In other words, development in art is not universal and is dependent on the environment in which a child grows up and is educated. This is definitely true because when we talk about visual perception, often we tend to make people believe or see visual perception as something that is universal or constant. This is not true. Depending on the social and other environmental factors, the development of child and by that same token, the evolution of child art can vary from country to country from time to time. Now, we were talking about scribblings and how a child that usually begins with scribblings. All uh, young children take great pleasure in moving a crayon or a pastel or a pencil across the surface. It could be a paper or a wall or anything or floor or your bed sheet or carpet. So, for them it is not important that they get a kind of conventional surface like a paper or canvas. Anything can be a surface and uh, that is why um, toddlers or very young kids uh, with crayon and markers can create havoc in their uh, house. Now, so, but this form of mark making or scribbling represents children's first self initiated encounters with art. So, when we see scribblings, they may not make much sense in the first instance because they may look absolutely nonsensical and um, without any content as such and which is true. Scribblings do not have any content within it, but scribbling is extremely important for a child to make itself very familiar with the very act of drawing or painting and without uh, scribbling a child cannot move on to the next stage. Children typically begin scribbling around one and a half years of age, could be earlier in certain cases. Most observers of child art believe that children engage in scribbling not to draw a picture of something, rather they do so for the pure enjoyment of moving their arms and making marks on a surface. So, in that sense scribbling is definitely a form of art, but more than that it is a form of play for a child. It is a play time, it is not art making or a creative time for very very young kids. Now, recently however, a few researchers have challenged this traditional view by showing that young children do occasionally experiment with representation even though their scribbles may not contain any recognizable forms. So, this is where again the visual perception or general notion of visual perception is found at stake. What we as adults or grown ups considered as mere scribblings 
may contain some representational idea even if it is not visually very clear. So, how do we know that? We have to talk to the children, we have to talk to that particular child who has made it and by talking or kind of uh, interacting with her or him, we may find out that what um, look like a mere scribbling, haphazard, random, arbitrary, meaningless scribbling may have some representational cues, uh, cues and clues hidden in it or intended at least. Now, this new perspective suggests that children's earliest mark making activities may be more complex than previously thought. So, look at this scribbling. Obviously, this scribbling does not make any sense if we are to look at some meaning of this scribbling, of if we are to look at some content of this painting, of if we are to look at some subject matter in this painting. It is merely a scribbling, but who knows this scribbling which is apparently meaningless may have some representational clues hidden in it and to know that we need to talk to the children or for that matter anything that is apparently abstract may look like uh, or may be considered as something that have a life or have a representational life. Now, particularly these objects which are just found objects from nature or dry leaves and uh, pretty abstract in their pattern and uh, but uh, a child uh, um, picks up these things and uh, she claims that uh, she can actually see whole lot of things in these apparently uh, abstract objects. Now, she claims that because visual perception for her is not just about uh, interpreting what she sees, but it is also about investing certain objects with new meanings. And this is what we had discussed in one of our earlier lectures, that visual perception is a give and take process. You receive, but you also give back and this is what exactly these children do. So, when you look at the activities of children, then you can make out the process uh, a visual perception is involved in while a child or a group of children is involved in the making of art. So, it is evident that a certain kind of abstract sensibility works in children very, very strongly. So, when children first start scribbling, they usually do not realize they can make the marks uh, do what they want. Uh, they often scribble in a random fashion by swinging their arms back and forth across the drawing surface. The lines they make may actually go off the paper, they may even look away from the page as they work, but it does does not take a long, a long time for children to recognize the relationship between their movements and the marks on the paper. As this discovery unfolds, children begin to control their scribbles by varying their motions and by repeating certain lines that give them particular pleasure. Longitudinal marks in one or more directions may result. Circular patterns and geometric shapes begin to appear as children's perceptual and motor abilities increase. Lines are combined with shapes to form various patterns and designs. Letter forms, especially those in the child's name, may show up among the marks on the page. Now, there is one important point here that is the, uh, the fact that uh, the visual perception in children is somewhat connected to also the motor movement of their arms and the wrists and fingers. So, it that makes everything together a very complex phenomenon and not very children. In this photography you can see slightly grown up children also find great joy in scribbling beside also making representational paintings. So, as young children become increasingly aware of the world around them, the many objects that make up their environment will begin to appear in their drawings. So, it is about making themselves aware of the visual world 
and it is also about that technical process in which the visual perception finds some visual form. These objects are seldom drawn in uh, a relationship to one another in position or size nor are they organized on the page the way in which they are related spatially in the world. Instead objects will typically appear to float on the page in the drawings and paintings done by children of preschool age. So this is obviously a painting done by a very very small child and what uh, once again what may look like a meaningless thing to us can actually have a very very serious kind of content uh, for the child who is making it. And then from scribbling one moves on to a more representational stage, but again very simplistic, very straightforward, very synoptic like this one as well or this one which we have already seen before or this one. So it looks like a very fast rapid kind of drawing done very rapidly in a haste, but when you observe a kid doing this kind of drawing you realize that he or she is aware of every mark, every point, every line that he or she is putting on this paper or this one. And then the child learns also naturally or spontaneously learns also to use the rest of the space in a given page. So its visual perception then is no more restricted to the object or the figure, it expands itself to cover the entire page on which he or she is doing the drawing. So there is a tendency now to fill up the space particularly when one is working with paint or for that matter this one. or this one. So initially it was all about marks floating on the paper, then later on a child also realizes the space around the marks or the figures and begins to fill up those spaces with color. So the progression from scribbling to corresponding uh, images uh, the images uh, corresponding to the viewed world uh, to a complex and a very compact composition is clearly evident in the most of the children's artworks. Visual perception then of certainly changes along with the creativity, but it is always better not to see it as a development from immature to mature stage. In fact, each stage demonstrates a different visual perception. You can keep on looking at various examples of child art and see that in spite of a common pattern of visual perception how child art is also subject to an unimaginable range of variations. You can take pictures across the country, across the culture and make a kind of survey or map the variations that you observe. When Pablo Picasso was asked why his work improved as he grew older, he observed that it had taken him a lifetime to learn to draw as a child because Picasso as a very matured artist was missing the visual perception that children usually enjoy. Then he goes on to say that every child is an artist, but the problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. So this is very interesting that on the one hand we want to develop or evolve, move away from the very initial formative stages of visual perception. But as far as fine artists are concerned, many of them like Pablo Picasso 
they also tends to kind of miss the very uh, potentially very creative uh, kind of visual perception that children usually enjoy in their child art. Thank you.